All right. Good day, everybody. Mike here from Northeastern Dirt Property Maintenance, and uh, I'm on a little shop project. I was working outside yesterday, and it just pounded rain. It was incredibly hard uh, rain here. So I thought, I'm going to start working on this smoker. So what I'm doing in here is I'm building my own smoker. And uh, I got an old ice box here. Actually, I picked up two of these several years ago. Somebody was tossing them out of a garage, so I thought, I'm not going to let these things go to the dump. I mean, these are old classic ice boxes and uh, well insulated too. Look at the thickness of this door right there. This, this box was completely insulated and I thought at the time it would either be a good uh, welding cabinet rod heater for storing a rod oven, for storing your electrodes in for welding, keep a light bulb in there, it would be excellent that. It would be just good for any storage because I picked up two of them that day and that's what this one is here too. This is a Monarch. If you look at this one, this is a Monarch. Not quite as well insulated, but still. And uh, it's got the ice box up top and it's fully insulated also. I just painted that one up, of course. My favorite Kubota orange. So that's what I'm working on now. And I figure I'm in the garage fooling around right now. So I'm gonna uh, get this smoker going. So what I got so far is, I'll show you what I got. I got my old turkey fryer. Burner in the bottom, that propane burner for the turkey fryer. That's what I'm going to use. And this is going to be a hot smoker. We're not talking cold smoke here. We're not talking traditional style smoking like my dad used to do in Germany and stuff like that. And uh, what they do in Europe with the cold smoke through the tunnel underground and come into a smokehouse traditional. I mean, in those cold smoke, you can smoke a side of bacon in there for. 10 to 14 days, no problem in a cold smoke. You can leave it in the smokehouse. This is gonna be a hot smoker. We're talking to 190 to 220 on a hot smoke. And uh, it's gonna have this propane burner in the bottom of this. And that propane burner, it's just gonna sit in there. Well, actually it's gonna sit in the bottom. And I'm gonna have 20 pound propane bottle. I'm gonna drill a hole through the side, feed the hose through. We'll feed our fuel, and then we're gonna have the typical hot chips on top. And uh, that's how we're gonna produce our hot smoke without catching those chips on fire. And uh, that's how we do it. We're gonna exit with a flue out the top. And this will be our flue right here with a damper in line to control that heat. Whoop, if it would work. It will work, it's just bent. So there you got your, you got your damper in there and that's gonna control a bit of your heat and a bit of your smoke coming out the top. And that will in turn be on the top end of that smoker. So last night I was out here starting on it just to give you guys a little bit of up-to-date what's going on. And I got my racking in, and this is actual oven racking that I took out of an oven before I scrapped it here. I kept the oven rack, which is good uh, stainless steel. So I got two oven racks in there, and I have a rotisserie on order. I've got the old rotisserie motor from a barbecue, but I don't have the skewer that goes through it and uh, I also don't have the uh, tongs to put your chicken or your roast in and slide it in there for the rotisserie so I ordered a complete new rotisserie kit on Amazon I think that's like 49 bucks I'm spending minimal on this thing just that rotisserie everything else I've got I've either got it from the scrap or just stuff I had on the shelves here so that's where I am right now double shelves and I'm going to mount the rotisserie when it comes in. The rotisserie will come in from the outside, right here. 
and you'll probably end up pulling this shelf out and you will rotate your chicken or your pork roast whatever you want right in there and uh, you can have a grease uh, drip tray on the first shelf to catch any drippings so they don't go in that frying pan and in those chips and uh, it should work pretty good. I had one made before but it was an old fridge and it wasn't insulated at all it was just tin and it worked okay and it was twice the size so you know what this should work good and it should hold temperature a lot better simply because it's fully insulated so it will maintain especially in the fall or winter it will hold and maintain temperature and use less propane overall because naturally it's more efficient fully insulated so I thought when I seen these right away, I thought, I can't let these things go to the dump. So I figured one day this would be a smoker. I'd use it somewhere in the shop, but I really had a smoker in my mind. So I slowly was gathering material and these racks are just made out of aluminum that I had over there in the shelves. And uh, that's all it is. It's nice to use stainless steel. Stainless steel is great, food grade stainless is great. We all know that stainless steel goes hand in hand with cooking and food, but this aluminum, because of the lower temperature, and let's face it, everybody uses aluminum foil, so it's not good for you, guaranteed, especially in an oven at 400 degrees or 350. But this is substantially lower temperature, so using aluminum here should be no issue whatsoever. I'll do a couple preliminary burns when I get it all done. I'll take it up in temperature quite a bit. And uh, I'll coat the inside of the smoker a little bit, burn off whatever's in there a little bit, and then uh, we'll just go from there. So that's where I am right now, and that's my little project in here. And uh, I just wanted a fairly good quality smoker, and uh, that's where we are, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to cut a hole in the top, and we also have to, you have to have draft. You can't just uh, fire up that propane burner and close the door. You have to have air coming in for combustion. Air has to come in, air has to go out, and of course you need air for combustion on that burner. So what I'm using is, on the outside, electrical box cover, and it will be drilled on the outside at the bottom of the hole. So all you'll do is you'll swing this open and closed, and you'll control the amount of air you got coming into the smoker. So, theoretically, if I drill a three inch hole in the bottom, and it's kind of guesswork, I'll probably put a three inch hole in the bottom, one three inch, and I'll test it. And uh, this will, I'll be able to open and close this according to the air supply that I want going in. Hopefully, it's kind of trial and error, but you definitely got to have combustion air coming in. So, and you want to be able to throttle it back or open it up. That's the whole idea of this damper, right? You want to control the incoming air here, the outgoing, and that's kind of the idea. So, that's what we're working on today. I just thought I'd show you guys I'm on a little project, and uh, it should come out pretty good. We'll see where we go. Of course, I'm going to paint it up and probably put a couple stickers on it. Who knows? So... I think the next thing we're going to do, we're going to bore the hole in the side for the air incoming and it's going to come in the side and uh, that should be fine. I don't really want to put anything in the bottom for incoming air up the bottom. I'd rather put it in the side where I can see what's going on and I can easily get at the uh, damper. Okay, All we'll right. go from there. So, I got this uh, stare at three inch hole saw and that is going to be our incoming air, three inch. That should be more than enough air coming in there to allow us to throttle it back. Because you've got to be able to control your air. And another thing that's going to be interesting is I don't know what kind of insulation's in this. I have no idea. Uh, we're going to find out. I'm kind of hoping it probably won't, but I'm hoping it's going to have cork. And uh, it'll be interesting to see. So we'll see what we got on the inside. So we know right away 
we're four inches up, 4.5 inches up from there. Now remember, I'm using a Sears Craftsman cheap drill with a two amp hour, 20 volt battery. Installation. this is. God, I hope it ain't asbestos. I think asbestos is white. Okay, if anybody in there knows what kind of insulation this is, Christ, I hope it ain't asbestos. It almost looks like I don't know what it is. It almost looks like grass, straw. Hey, have a look in there. Look at that insulation. I don't know what it is. I have no idea what asbestos fibers look like. Hope that ain't asbestos. All right, so there's a drain hole. I just noticed there is a drain hole in the bottom of that ice box to let the water out. The hole is already in the bottom. So what we'll do is we'll just connect this propane line. We'll feed it through that drain hole and then uh, possibly put some silicone around it and we'll run that into our uh, burner. We'll use that as the entrance hole for the propane hose. Rather than drill another hole, another needless hole. you guys something else in these burners too and a lot of you guys probably already have a fryer or maybe you don't have a fryer but you also adjust your airflow to your propane for your proper air fuel mixture with this damper right here and the actual burner itself to get the proper flame proper blue flame and right amount of oxygen so this actually has a little damper on it too so I ended up having to go through the side of the cabinet. I didn't want to, but the hose was too short to come from underneath and around to the outside to hook up to the top of a barbecue bottle. So now we come through the side. It's plenty long to hook up to our 20 pounder. And uh, I'll put a little hanger on the side. I was just looking at that, uh, <laughs> it's kind of funny. I was just looking at that, I'm assuming is, uh, straw or grass inside this ice box, whatever they use. And I'm thinking, wow, I don't want to be smoking anything indoors like in the shop or anything, not that anything would burn. But if this thing ever caught fire and burned out the inside, it would be like a muskeg fire. It would be burning inside the walls of this and you'd come out and everything would be smoked. And yeah, you'd have smoked chicken all right, smoked hams, everything would be burnt to a crisp if this thing ever caught fire with that dry grass. So I gotta put a little silicone bead around there and I'll end up siliconing around that air inlet hole too. Now that I know it's dry grass that's in here for insulation. And uh, they used, I guess, whatever was available when they used ice boxes. So anyway, we got the burner in. The burner's hooked up and uh, perfect. Now we gotta go through the top. We gotta go through the top. 
and we got to get this vent pipe in the top. That will be our next job. All right, so here's the dilemma we're up against right now. There is no exact science here, and I guess it's just up to you to figure out. I was looking and pondering, and I've been studying it a little bit and reading about it, and I had my other smoker, and it go, it's as far as uh, the outlet stack on your smoker. You can have a three inch on the bottom, which I have with a damper, but then you have to determine what size stack do I want on the outlet side of that smoker. And uh, there's all kinds of opinions. So I've come to the conclusion it's about trial and error. But one thing, and it's about in controlling combustion air coming in and controlling heat and smoke going out. So it's up to you to feel your way into that and what works best for you. But I was gonna use this because I already have it. And it's always been on my mind that this is six inch and I thought it's too big. I was gonna use it because I had it. So there's six inch and there's four inch. And here is two and a half inch. And all those uh, pipes will have a different outcome when it comes to getting rid of your heat, stagnating smoke and velocity of smoke coming through. And uh, so I thought six inch is too big. I think that six, six inch I'm gonna lose too much smoke too quickly and too much heat. So I kind of ruled out the six inch, I changed my mind. So I took this one right out because of the size of the smoker. And then I looked at two and a half inch and I thought, too small. I thought you could end up with smoke that sits in your firebox too long. And what happens when you're smoking something and your smoke sits in your firebox too long, it becomes soury, uh, how do I say it? Soury, stagnant smoke. It's not exhausting quick enough with the heat to come out and it will tend to build like your chimney your chimney on your house or your wood stove, it'll tend to build creosote. So it will build surplus creosote and everything else inside your firebox and it could build it on your meat too by too slow a velocity and too stagnant of smoke. So there's a balance between inlet air and outlet smoke for sure. So I decided too slow. I could be wrong really, but I'm just guessing. Six inch, too big, too fast too high a velocity, too much heat and smoke leaving. Even when you damper it off, there's just too much room around that damper. And I thought, this is too small. So I settled on four inch. I went to town and I got four inch and look inside. Can you see me? Right there, have a look. There's the damper. So four inch and I put a little, it's got a little, uh, damper inside to help with the slow that smoke and heat down. So I settled with four inch. And you know what? It is not an exact science. Maybe it is somewhere in Europe to a professional smoker who hot smokes and somebody who really knows professionally how to smoke. But uh, you just have to fool around you have to feel your way into how much air is coming in and how much air is going out. So that's why you pretty much need a damper, adjustable damper on your outlet side where you can throttle the heat and the smoke back. And you just go from there, really. That's all we're going to do. We're going to give it a try and hope for the best. So now I got to knock in a four inch hole on top. That's going to be the next step. So that's where we are. I had to run to town. I wasn't happy with what I had. So I think I got. 17 bucks in that pipe and damper, so that's 17 bucks. And uh, I haven't spent a lot of money. Most of this has just been uh, recycled material I've got for nothing or brought home. We'll so we'll go for four inches. Actually, that's going to be a little less than four inches, that pipe. All right, so I was in another dilemma. I got no jigsaw blades for my jigsaw to cut a four inch hole in the top. 
So I ended up drilling the three inch hole in the top for the exhaust, three inch on the damper on the bottom on the intake, and then on the exhaust side, three inch. I wanted this four inch, but I have no jigsaw blades. I have no side cutters to cut through this steel properly. And um, no hole saw. I had nothing to really get through the top. Amazingly, I cannot find my jigsaw blades. I found some shitty ones. So, unfortunately, we're going four inch to three inch reducer, three inch out the top to the four inch pipe that I bought. And right now we're going to uh, just crimp this up a little bit so it fits in there a little bit better with these crimping pliers. These are good for uh, wood stove pipe, whatever you want. You just put a crimp on them all the way around. They're meant to crimp sheet metal and it takes up that extra space. And then things just drop in a little tighter. This was a bit tight going in. Now we got right there, we got our perfect three inch. This really, what I really wanted was four inch to four inch, but it just didn't work out. So I went three inch, stepped up to a four, and I got a four inch pipe over here. And also, they had no, so there you go. That's gonna be the stack. And there's your four inch damper in line to shut that off. And we'll just see how it works this way. So I could have put a three inch hole in the top, which I did, and go to a three inch pipe, but unfortunately they had no three inch dampers at the hardware store. So I ended up going with a four inch because they had the inline nice fit dampers in here. So I thought, that's okay. We'll see how it works. And then we're gonna screw this stack together. And then that's it for that portion of it. Sometimes you just gotta make do. You don't get everything perfect. But you know what, you just carry on, man. That's how it is. All we're doing is just drilling out this stack. And uh, just hold it together. And all you're doing there is screwing that stack together. You're just holding that uh, fitting together on there. So when you take it in and out, it stays together. All right, so if you have a look up inside right there, I sleeve the inside of this smoker so the insulation doesn't fall out. What I did was I wrapped brass shim stock. I wrapped brass shim stock around the exhaust tube and I pushed it down and right down in there. So the brass shim stock now comes right through and plugs the hole so the insulation doesn't fall out. It's just really a brass liner in there. And I'm gonna do the same thing down here right now. I'm gonna take that tape out and I'm going to stick brass shim stock in that hole and uh, get rid of that tape. Kinda thought we could come up with something a little bit better. So. Take that damper out and we'll pull that tape off of there. I don't like tape, but sometimes you got no choice. There's the insulation. Hopefully you can see what you got in there. It almost looks like grass and uh, some sort of fibrous material, almost like an organic grass. So you got a three inch hole. So what's the circumference of that three inch hole? If the diameter is three inch, what's the circumference? Well, the circumference of that hole theoretically should be in my mind from what I remember, 
it should be pi, which is 3.14, so it would be uh, 3 inches times pi, 3.14. I think that's what pi is anyway, based on circumference. I could be wrong. So what we'll do is we'll straighten that up. We'll just see how we turn and how this works out. It worked out okay at the top. We'll see how it works out now. All right, I got the propane bottle hooked up. We're gonna go for a little fire in the hole. Who knows how this is gonna turn out. got that turkey cooker fired and this propane as you can tell it has the adjustable knob on from your turkey fryer so you can increase and decrease the size of your flame right there with the adjustable knob and the regulator so you crank her up oh yeah you can get some serious fire going in there she's just a hissing but that's not what you want Be a fair bit of work on this thing if I burned her to the ground. And I got to get a uh, digital thermometer for this, for the meat, and I'm also going to get a drill through thermometer for inside the cabinet and they can go in the door, drill right through the door, stick it on the front and you can always tell, boy you can feel the heat in there. I gotta fix that door up a little bit. And there you go. So guess what? We're gonna get that frying pan and put some chips in it. You'd think a man that's got two wood chippers would have some chips on hand. I'm gonna have to make my own chips. sparks up right away look in there you got your nice blue flame you got good combustion going on and we got the fry pan on top with some chips in it we'll see what happens all right so we got a flame going on in there Feel a little bit of heat here around the stack, slightly, not too much. Oh, and you can feel the heat coming out of the top of that stack. So, I'll burn it up and I'll get back to you. Buddy, have a look. We got our first hint of smoke rolling out that door crack right there. And look at the pipe. We just got our first little bit of smoke coming out of there. That's with junky bush chips. There and there. Now let's see what happens when we open the damper. Okay, now we got the damper open. Oh yeah, a lot more smoke coming out. And nothing hardly coming out the front door at all now. See that damper, as you guys can tell, that damper has a direct reflection on the pushback and the amount of smoke that comes out around this door and what comes out the top. So I'm throttling it back just a little bit. And now you get a bit more smoke coming out the door. Plus it's windy, it's hard to see anything. And there you have it. The chips are just starting to smoke in there. Taking that 
could be a bit too hot. So I need an indoor thermometer right through the wall or through the front door so I know exactly how hot in there. We're looking for, we're looking for 180 to 220 max. Okay, good day you guys. I'm back out here, day number two, working on the smoker. I was supposed to be on a budget build, but I couldn't help it. I went with some of my credit card points. I had to go to the city today and I just got back. And I was in the barbecue section and smoker section just cruising because I was looking for this. I want one of those uh, thermometers. I had one on my other one. And you just drill a hole through your smoker, stick the thermocouple in, and just from the outside, you can tell what temperature you're running your smoker at. You have to have that. You can't go without this thing. But, of course, once you're in the smoker and barbecue section, well, I bought a couple trinkets. I bought the rib rack for standing up your, uh, when you're smoking your ribs. Got that. But that wasn't the end of it. I'll show you what else I bought. Nothing fancy. I bought this guy, stainless steel smoking dish for whatever you want to do. Man, you can smoke anything. It doesn't matter. Sausage, cheese, you could smoke your cheese. You could do anything. Whatever you want to smoke, there you go. Permeable stainless steel smoking tray. Bought that. And one more thing. And normally I never, never waste money on stupid little shit like this in small volumes, but that's what they had. I bought some uh, smoking chips just to try, but I bought mesquite. I wanted to try these. That's the only thing that caught my attention. They had apple, they had maple. Well, I got a whole bush full of maple. I don't need maple chips and I got a chipper. But I wanted this mesquite. Hickory, apple, and mesquite are three nice woods for smoking. And maple's fine too. There's lots of wood you can use. And uh, so I bought this little bag. Oh, and besides, anyway, look at They're premium chips, top of the line. Vermont castings, wood chips. Okay, so. Four dollars out of that was for the name Vermont Castings in the plastic bag, no doubt. So, and I think that bag, that chips right there, eight bucks for that little bag, eight dollars. Normally I would never think of buying that, but I wanted to try it. So, eight bucks for the chips or two bucks US. Okay, so that's where we are today. Right now I'm going to drill a hole through this door and I want to get that meat thermometer. I just made a bracket. So what we're going to do, going to drill a hole through this door because obviously you're working at the front all the time. No sense putting a thermometer on the side. You might as well put it right through the front door. And uh, actually, there's already two slits in here for something, whether there's an emblem or something on there, gone. So what we'll do is we'll utilize that area right there. We'll cover it up. And uh, what we're going to do we're going to put this bracket on there and it's got the mount already on it. We're going to slip it right through and uh, you'll see when we're done. It'll work. It'll work pretty good. I don't usually lose too much control when I go shopping, but when I went to the barbecue section today, I kind of lost control. I thought those are neat little trinkets. Okay, we're gonna have to put a pilot hole in there. That's totally uncooperative. And we'll get that first screw in there. I had this thing fired up this morning. I came out this morning with my coffee and I was just standing in the shop, of course. Dead quiet out here. It's nice in the morning having your coffee out here in the morning. Super quiet. But anyway, I was just pondering and that's my time for a little bit of thinking. But anyway, I fired this thing up because I wanted to smoke the inside a little bit. I fired it up last night, fired it up again this morning, just burned some propane, get a little bit of coating in the inside slowly. But anyway, I shut her down before I went uh, shopping up in North Bay. 
And I uh, went back in the house and it was at least an hour later I came out to the smoker with the damper shut and closed. And I opened the door in this and you could actually still feel that heat on the inside of those insulated walls all the way around when you feel them. You could still feel the heat of this insulated ice box. So it's very, uh, very good on holding heat. And like I say, that makes a huge difference on your uh, burn temperatures. So theoretically, now that we got this bracket on here, I'll drill a hole through that door and we should be able to slide that thermometer right on that angle iron, slide it right through. And uh, we should be in the upper portion here. Uh, overall and just see where we are Now we got to go all the way through this door Oh, it doesn't make it either. Look how thick that door is that drill bit won't make it Hopefully we can get her Still can't get it. All right, that took us right through there for that bad boy. what she's supposed to look like I'm right there that's what it's supposed to look like I got the little bracket on there holding it goes to 550 degrees and we are long gonna be in deep shit if we hit 550 this thing will be up in smoke it'll be like a uh, bad Cheech and Chong movie this thing should be up in smoke and that'll be the end of that we'll have a grass fire and it'll be a nightmare All right, so, and you can look at the depth. You can see the depth right there that that thermocouple comes inside. So, you know, you've got uh, seven inches in there probably. Perfect. And that should give you a, a nice true reading of the inside temperature of this. Okay, so we got that done. We're gonna do a bit of a fire up. I'm gonna fire this thing up. We'll see how that uh, thermometer works. We'll get our high-end Vermont castings uh, wood chips out here. Should be extra special since they're Vermont castings. I left a little bit of the uh, cheap chips. So we got her loaded up. And we'll fire it up. I'm gonna have to buy my own tank and my own propane because we, we can't be stealing. We can't be stealing from the house, from the propane, I mean, from the barbecue. All right, so we fired it up, I got her going. And when I fire it up, I like to keep that damper closed. Simply for the fact that you want the least amount of heat. Oh, and I put a chimney cap on there. Kind of a little cheesy one, but just in case I ever used it outside. Look, I put a little uh, electrical box cover on there. Little galvanized bracket. I just put it on there basically to almost give it a finished look. And just in case it was out in the rain. This uh, ice box has sat outside in the rain because it's so well formed with the metal 
and it's uh, so watertight from the top that it sat outside for two years since I moved here. This is the first time really it's been inside and I put it there. So it's been out for two years and uh, she's bone dry inside. Oh, check her out. Sweet. Check her out. She's 100 degrees right there. She's 100 and climbing. And you have to have, you have to have something very accurate or fairly accurate like this. You got to have, you can't guess. 200, 225 in and around there. Really, you're just doing a hot smoke cook. What you're really doing here, you're just doing hot smoke cookery. That's all you're doing. You're cooking long and slow and you're imparting a smoke flavor into the meat. That's all you're doing with this style of uh, Smoking. We'll watch this thing climb, see where we go. Because I have no idea where I'm dialed in with that propane down there. But boy, she comes up quick. Let's do something right now while we're thinking of it. Let's put a, uh, let's put a little dab of Permatex around here. Clear. That's just a slight dab of Permatex around that oversized hole around that thermocouple. All right, once I get some smoke roll, I'll get back to you guys. We'll get this thing fired up, get some smoke roll. I'll get her dialed in and we'll go from there. And once, <laughs> once I bought these trinkets from Canadian Tire that I couldn't help myself, I thought, oh boy, I need a chicken and I need a rack of ribs. So I bought one rack of ribs and I bought one chicken I don't know what MJ's doing in the house right now, but I told her to flatten or uh, fillet that chicken and lay it out, and we can do it in here, or we may end up doing some ribs in here, but we're gonna do one of the two once I get this thing fired up. And then we'll see how this thing works. And uh, next week, Monday, I think, the uh, Amazon full rotisserie kit should arrive from uh, Purilator, and then I'll put that on the side, but for now, we go with no rotisserie, strictly on the racks. Oh, I'll show you something else. All right. So when I cut those uh, oven racks in there, stainless, rather than throw this stuff away in the scrap, what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna cut these out and I'm gonna make myself some stainless steel hanging hooks for meat in there. They're gonna be, I'm gonna turn these into hanging hooks, all the stainless, and uh, I'm gonna put myself a couple threaded rod hangers inside, and uh, I'll be able to hang meat in there too. So I just saved these. Those are just scrap end cuttings off those racks. Hundred and sixty degrees and climbing. All right, I'll get back to you guys once we get some smoke pumping out of here. All right, you guys. I went inside, I couldn't resist. I parboiled part of these pork ribs and I spiced them up a little bit and we're gonna do a little bit of a hot smoke. We'll see how long it goes. Probably gonna take an hour and a half, two hours maybe. We got the drip tray underneath. This is just a trial run. This could be a complete disaster, but we'll see what happens. Those ribs right there, those pork ribs, spare ribs, I was just reading about them on the internet. I parboiled them anyway to kind of speed the process up, but uh, 250 degrees, four hours to do ribs in a hot smoker. So parboiling them, I didn't want to parboil them right down because you don't want to lose all your juices and fats and everything. So we just semi-parboiled them for 15 minutes 
throw them in the smoker. We'll see what happens. Right now we're gonna watch that temperature come up. And it's coming up good. And uh, once we get some smoke going, I'll show you guys. We'll get her going first. All right, so she's pushing about 230 degrees right there. So I just slightly dialed it back. It's coming up, just getting a little bit of smoke there. And uh, we'll carry on. All right, I've been fooling around out here. For the last half hour, 40 minutes, and this smoker's been going. And I haven't had a lot of luck with the smoke. Not saying that it's not working, right? But you know what? It's not working to where it should be. And I think I figured out why. These chips for the size of flame and the 250 degrees, these size chips are too big. These mesquite chips, they're a little bit too big. A lot of them, not all of them. So, I come up with a little idea. Of course, the Craftsman battery powered chainsaw comes through again. I got this seasoned maple out of the woodshed. This is seasoned sugar maple. And I've been making my own chips right here just fooling around. And this is hard. So I've been making my own chips and it works excellent. Of course we'll bring out our old vintage players, light canister, steel. So what I've been doing is, this is ideal, right here. These chippy sawdust that that battery power chainsaw makes is, is quite dry. You don't want it too dry, but it's dry enough. And I mixed some of this in with that mesquite, 60 or 70% finer, uh, wood chips, 20 to 25% mesquite chips, and uh, you know what? This stuff here, it's ideal. You mix some of that mesquite in there, the bigger chunks, works pretty good. So immediately better results, immediately. Have a look at that. Look at that. That was within a couple minutes, the results of going to a smaller chip. So, but, Look where we are. I cranked the temperature up just ever so slightly. We're at 275. I'm gonna take it down. I'm gonna drop that down now a little bit and hover around 250 and we'll just see how much smoke we got. But if you look, she's coming. Now she's turning on. And we'll pop that damper open until some of this smoke disappears out the door and we'll see what it, if it helps. There you go, see the cut down? Right there. Now look. Sweet. That's what it should be looking like. At the same time, you don't want a fire. Okay. You don't want those chips to combust in there either. That's uh, not what you're after either. Man, I'm so a we, I throttle this back a little bit. Keep the smoke inside just a little bit. And you can see up there, it's kicking along. So that's where we are right now. I just been fooling around, trying to find the right size chip that's gonna work good in here. And I think with that uh, hard sugar maple right there, that should be perfect. With that battery saw and just uh, cut up what I need a little bit and uh, combine it with a bit bigger chip. All right, and see, here's where we are. I turned that down. She's hanging about 250. Okay, so I'm just giving you a little bit of uh, up to date. I got them ribs in there, and we'll just go from there. Hopefully things turn out all right. Okay, we'll carry on. All right. So I've been fooling around and fooling around, and I've realized that I can't get a good smoke in this smoker till about 280 to 300 degrees. Right now it's pushing just a little bit 
at 300. I turned it down a little bit, but I got to have at least 280. Just depends on these a little bit coarser chips. I'm going to try using those purely those finer maple and just see. But as of right now, to get the best smoke on there, to get a good smoke the way I want it up top like that. You got to have, you're pushing close to 300. Yeah, it's coming nicely there. But 225 with a coarser chip, it won't cut it. So we'll have to experiment and see where we go. We're pushing about almost, we're pushing 300 degrees right now. And I don't want to be, I don't want to be that high. So I'm going to have to go to a finer chip. All right, there's where we are so far. They're coming along, man. The smoke's rolling out of there. Nice and brown. Really nice ambery brown color on that thing too. I better shut her back up. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so that amount of time, I opened the door. She dropped down to 170. We're about 170 just with that wide open door and everything. We'll see how fast that climbs back up because this is so insulated and holds the heat so well. I'll bet you it won't take time to come back up like an old uninsulated fridge or anything like that. Look at that. She's coming, she's climbing, she's already over 200 and coming. That's the good thing about having insulation. Also old stoves, old appliances, anything insulated, even an old uh, electrical stove, electric stove that's insulated inside, they make a good smoker too, man. Anything with insulation. All right, you guys, I shut her down. Everything works good, I shut it down and uh, we'll have a look at the end product. I can't leave you guys hanging. Here is the end product before I take it in the house of those. We got some rendering fat melted out in the bottom of the drip tray and have a look at this here. Get right in on this. I couldn't leave you guys out. And you come down that rib with a boning knife and it's pretty good and it looks very, very good. Let's give her, let's give her a little sample. Look at that. You got that nice honey brown on there. And you got a serious smoke flavor happening. Very good. Not too dry. I'm gonna say it's good, it's very good. Oh yeah, still slightly, slightly pink, not overcooked, not totally white and dried out, just pork, perfect, and it tastes good. So you know what, I'm going to take this in the house and we're going to eat it, but I'm going to say very good. I'm going to tighten up some of those air inlets, leaks around there a little bit, get a little more control. I've learned on that fire a little bit, but I think for the first test run on that smoker, you guys, I would say, I would say that's looking pretty good right there. That pork's looking good. Last thing you want is pure white pork that's hard and dry. That's not what you want. That's like, like wrecking a perfectly good pork chop. Okay, you guys. I showed you the build and the smoker. Later on, we'll get into some fine tuning. We gave her the first run and uh, hey, it turned out pretty good. Thanks for tuning in and it's uh, got a fabulous smoky flavor. Okay, thanks. But it's not overwhelming, it's just perfect. Thanks for tuning in.